recording this whole thing? Okay, I, I thought to. we were. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> this is, the, this is gonna be all. No, this is the most like okay. sweet intro ever. So, uh, you can okay. you can start off by telling the people all the technological issues we've been through the past fifteen minutes. Fix your shit, bro, because it's all your fault. <laughs> Don't put that in there. Okay, I'll just bleep it. Just be, and just in case if I want a sponsorship, you know? Yeah, I gotta, yeah. you know. Hi, my name is Sweet Tales. A lot of people call me Tails. I'm a content creator. I'm a variety streamer. And I'm a badass bitch. I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. I've been doing this for about four, what? Four or five years now. And I do it full time and I love it. Um, I did take some time off, but I'm back now. And um, yeah, I just like to make people laugh. I'm loud. I don't give a f can I swear? Yeah, you can swear. Okay. I don't give a... I don't... <laughs> should I use the F one or the... Uh, the sh I won't use a bad word, just so AT&T doesn't hate me. Um, I don't give a shit what people think about me. I've always, I always preach to everybody to be your authentic self. Um, and I think I've helped, you know, pave the way for a lot of other streamers that are, like, you know, trying to grow to be comfortable with who they are and... and just you know do their thing without caring what people think because it's the internet and the internet sucks so is it okay, okay is it okay it. that i call you sweet call me tails okay i because i kind of just switch it up every now and again you can uh, most people call me tails okay. the sweet part is not no one really it's either tails yeah you can call me tails tails is good okay i'm just i'll, I'll switch it up that's on me that's on me for sure but tails are, is this also is this also i think you might have posted about this is this your first like official esports slash gaming competition at least to this like level against these kind of players yeah i mean i've done some twitch rivals yeah i don't know what if that is considered um up there but you know so i've i've kind of dabbled in that and that was a couple of years back and that was with a call of duty which is the main was my main game back then at that time um but yeah i would say this is definitely my like big first Pow, pow, you know <laughs> that's how i would label it as well i don't even know what that means but whatever <laughs> it just sounded cool so i did it <laughs> so so when you see these games like obviously we're already through week one so fortnite then we got league of legends street fighter and counter-strike how comfortable are you with, with these titles overall <laughs> um like Oh, I'm so comfortable. Like everybody else that is in this tournament, we are so thriving right now because these games are exactly what we play every single day of our lives. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I would say on a scale of one to 10, negative five. Um, not a, but you know what? Practice makes perfect. Fortnite was probably the most comfortable because I'm an FPS gamer um, because I play Call of Duty and stuff. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. I got some kills in, so I was proud of myself for that. Uh, but League, which is today, um, cross my heart, hope to die. I'm going to shit myself before the end of the stream. I swear to God. I'm not even kidding. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. Uh, so outside of Call of Duty, then, what would you say would be like your main game? Like, What's a game you have a significant number of hours in? And could you name how many hours you got in some of those titles? Why you, oh, my God. These are really hard questions. It's um, just guesstimation. <laughs> Tails? Stop doing your job so good, so well. Damn. Um, honestly, COD is my main game. I grew up playing COD. Um, I've been gaming for a long time before I even started streaming on Xbox. Um, that was the first console my parents got me. And even before that, Genesis. Um, and then PC, I would play like Zoo Tycoon and Roller Coaster Tycoon oh, and shit like so that. Okay. Oh yeah, the OGs. But um, yeah, I would say COD, but I do like a lot of story games. The thing is, is I don't like to play them on stream mm, because they're so long. I like to, and I like to enjoy it myself. Um, but I would say Call of Duty. And then other than that, I'm a variety gamer. I play anything. Um, yeah, really anything, to be honest. So was there anything specifically you did like in preparation ahead of this tournament? Or you kind of just... Um, <laughs> well, I did practice. Um, I did rage a lot. Um, I did, you know, I think when you enter into a tournament with a lot of other, um, streamers that are competing gamers, I would sh should say that are really, really good. Um, it kind of makes you want to up the ante a little bit. And so I, I you know, I, I did put practice in, I've been practicing and I think that's the respectful thing to do. I don't think people should join a tournament and just be like, I don't give a fuck. You know, like, <laughs> I don't really care. You know, I, you know, I think you do need to have some sort of level of being able to play, 
um, and practice because that's what it's about. So we'll see how many actual streamers perform tomorrow, not including myself because I'm probably going to die a lot. So just don't forget everything I just said because I'm going to fucking... <laughs> I was trying to have a profound moment yeah. and because I was contradicting myself, <laughs> even though I have practice, but okay. Anyways, next question. <laughs> well, a lot of, a lot of your competitors uh, do have practice just because they are professional players, you know, yeah, it's I, terrifying. you're a content creator and a streamer and a very good one at that. But the, the beauty of this tournament is they have streamers and creators, and then they want to throw in professional players who certainly have a lot of time. Uh, is there anyone on the list of competitors, either ahead of time or now, that you are like fearful of in any of these games? Fear anybody. I'm just kidding. Um, take that out. Don't put that in the interviews. That was so corny. It was so fucking corny. That's going to be your tagline. To... Oh, I don't fear anyone. Just kidding. Half the lobby that I'm playing against. Um, I think, you know what it is? I think it's not that I'm like, fearful to play against them because i know i'm gonna lose i think i'm just so honored to be able to be included to play with them do you see what i'm saying so i'm not i'm i'm more that that's the most anxious part for me because it's pretty dope to be playing with some of the legends that are out there you know that are going to be that are participating in this tournament so that's really what i get anxious about but in regards to gaming and playing you know yeah do i want to win do i think i'm going to win the whole thing no but i am 13th place though so I'm not last. <laughs> a, lo W's. <laughs> a, a lot of people throughout this competition, I feel like that ends up being part of the goal is like to see how high up the rank you can because oftentimes yeah. the pros are just going to really perform as well. Uh, yeah. Throughout these remaining titles, obviously you said you're a bit scared for League. Are you excited to dabble into Street Fighter and CS? They're, they're kind of difficult games because I'm an FPS guy too. So this list is kind of difficult if you just have been playing Call of Duty or FPS yeah. games. Are you excited for any of the other titles? I think League is the one I'm most worried about, which is today. And once we get through that, I think it's a home stretch. Uh, Street Fighter is a lot of fun. Um, and I've been playing it. It's, it's, it's more complicated than I thought it was going to be. But um, it really helps that the characters are either like super, super hot, especially the women and the men in the game. I'm just saying. It makes it a lot easier because who doesn't want to beat the shit out of a really hot girl or i guess that doesn't make sense with big boobs uh, i don't know don't say, don't put that in take that out take that we're out. not gonna have an interview left don't you can't put this whole thing you got you're gonna have to cut it up that, that is true that is true into don't, don't say that i'm gonna get i'm gonna get canceled for saying that it's gonna be tails uh, saying i fear no one no don't you. okay wait let me start over let me, no, let me start no, i think over. that was good i think that was good Oh, wait, hold on. Where do I say? Okay, hold on. But like, I have Sketch on my team, so I don't really give a shit anyway. <laughs> I, don't, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm like, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, let's go. I'm good because you know the content's going to be really good. That is for sure. I was actually going to ask you about that too because yeah. we have newcomers every year to the event and names that I get very excited about. You are a very much a personality, a very humorous person. I was super excited to see. And along with you, obviously, one of the biggest creators blowing up right now in the world is also sketch. And so yeah. I, I think you guys being paired is a, con I know. a content Genius. strategy. TNT. <laughs> well done. We're going to bring and baby. Don't you worry. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, because you've been at this for a number of years now too. What's one of the crazier things that streaming has allowed you to do in your life? Equip my full-time job, <laughs> help my parents uh, pay off their house. Um, help my parent, help my dad get one of his dream cars, just helping my family, helping my sister. Like that for me is so rewarding. And I'm not trying to be like corny. I'm just being honest um, to be able to support the people around me. But I would say the craziest things um, are just the opportunities that I've gotten in regards to like brands that I've worked with and sponsorships. Um, I've, I've worked with a lot of big sponsorships and and it's something i'm really proud about because you know this is my full-time job and i take it very seriously um but yeah i mean I, there's so many i've been doing this for five years i can't even like think of a specific time um but it's it's truly rewarding and i'm blessed and i am humbled and grateful for all the success that i've had for sure man it's crazy 
It's crazy. Uh, I'm really glad you actually mentioned your dad because I, I feel like the dynamic that you two have in your content is, is very unique uh, to you. And what's it like to have Papa Tails become this oddly staple part of your content where he makes these appearances? What, what's that like? I have always been a daddy's girl. I love my dad. We have been so close uh, since I was younger. He's a, He's the gamer. He's actually trying to play Star Citizen right now. Oh. And he's like so pumped about it. Yeah. And and everyone's like, he should start streaming. I'm like, no, that's a really bad idea. Um, I love my mom too. I get my wit and my humor from my mom for sure. Uh, but it is really awesome to be able to bring my dad in to incorporate him because I just feel like it gives more of a family feel for people in the community. Like they love that. And not only do they love me, but they love my dad too. And that that's such an awesome thing to happen in a community um you know when i first started streaming he didn't he didn't know what it was i mean we're talking like four or five years ago he was like what are you doing and then when he started to see the money i was making and and seeing what was it was really about then he understood it and then he let loose you know my, <laughs> five years ago my dad would never cuss now fast forward to now we're talking about morning wood on my stream so it's it's just ridiculous i'm sorry i shouldn't have said that <laughs> not sorry there's context to that by the way no, no, I'm, so gonna, I don't, I'm gonna cut it i'm gonna cut it be like what's it like to have your dad be a part of your content and you just go morning wood oh yeah 100 percent. i um i think it just helps people relate more and gives people more of a way to connect with you when the more you let your viewers into your life um which i don't do a lot in regards to my personal life and everything but the more you can let them in a little bit especially regarding when it has to do with my dad um and your family it makes them feel more included and it also makes them feel like they're home which is why i do it and my dad really enjoys it too he gets a kick out of it it's awesome i really enjoy it did yeah. i freeze Stop! what the Dude, fuck I... okay hold on a second no i got i oh, turn, turn your mouth Okay, I think it's gonna stay now. I think it just needed a little. I'm so sorry, Jake. This does not no, happen. It's, it's all I swear. good. It just happens to be the day. It's all I guess. good. I, we'll we'll close it out uh, with just two last questions. Then I, I think you have done a great yeah. job fostering that kind of community, though a very very supportive and diehard community, which is the goal of any creator out there. And I, I believe it was stemming into last year. You were also sorry this year coming back from a pretty long break as well. What was that like, yeah. though, being able to return after such a long time away to know that there were so many people still willing to be there for you? Because not everyone can do that, you know? Yeah, it was, um, it was, I don't, I can't even describe it. I was terrified coming back because I didn't know what was going to happen when you take almost a year off, like, you know, am I going to fall off? Am I going to still be even relevant? Um, but I have created such an amazing community that that doesn't matter. And that, that showed me when I came back that that was so true that everyone was there to support me. And it was, it was mind blowing to be honest. Um, cause I was, I was scared, you know, and, um, it was one of the most amazing feelings, um, to be able to see what my community is truly capable of and that I've always known that they were capable of is in keeping the faith in me and believing in my content enough to be able to let me take a break and then come back. And that doesn't happen yeah. often. Um, and I truly love them for that. Um, but that's because of all the hard work that I've put into making it what it is, you know, that doesn't just come right. Um, so I was glad that all my hard work that I've done over the years finally was able to take some time off and then to come back to that. I just, I love them. Uh, it's everything to me. And they've actually, they have actually helped me even more to heal and get back to where I was, which it's, you know, it's a slow, slow journey that I'm on, but every day gets better and better. And that's all, that's the best I can do, you know, for and now. And off the back of that, do you have any advice for aspiring creators and streamers out there? This is a loaded question, <laughs> Jake. Um, <clears throat> I think the industry is completely different than what it was four or five years ago. And I think it's a lot harder now for sure. Um, and I, I, I feel bad, you know, I think we all started thriving when COVID happened, right? Everyone kind of took off and then, and that was the time for streamers. Now it's like the, the, the industry is so oversaturated. So the most important thing to do is you need to 
give yourself a, a voice. You need to build your brand and you need to different, differentiate yourself from the other people doing. And I tell people all the time, if you see someone doing something that you want to do, then study them, learn what they're doing and do it better because there's always going to be someone out there that's doing it better than you. And you have to be the best in this industry to, to, to survive now. Um, but be yourself, you know, and I say that I've always said that since day one, always be yourself. Um, and really hone in on the things that make you different from other people. Um, and don't lose yourself too. you know, keep, I don't know. It, it, it's so hard. And I wish I could help people. Like there's so many different things that you can be doing. Um, but also, you know, utilizing all the social media platforms, which can be very overwhelming um, because there's so many out there, but just be yourself and really focus on what you want to bring to the table, you know, yeah. and wish, you know, pray to God that it works. <laughs> I don't know. I feel bad. It's, it's it's hard. It's really hard. Consistency is key. Schedule, you know, planning your content out, putting all into it. Like, ah, oh God, I, I I could sit here and talk to you for hours about it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I think at the end of the day, that's great advice, especially if you nitpick all the key points. It's like best of luck, first off. But then it's, but yes. it's also like be yourself. Don't lose yourself, I think is is well worded uh, in all of this entails. Nobody is going to know the struggles we went through to get this interview over with, but it was an absolute I joy know. of a conversation. So I'm, <laughs> I appreciate that. I, you are a gem for even putting up with the video cutting in and out the audio and stuff, but we made it through together. And now I feel like we're like BFFs for life. Yes, right. Yes. And yeah. We, we went through some traumatizing <laughs> stuff together. I'm going to go cry. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Me too.